Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you the board and Datton system that we installed, my wife and I installed in our den, as you can see behind me. Um, this is a system that went over a textured wall, and so we basically used three parts uh, to make this all come together. The first part of the system was the, the paneling, and so this is to um, cover up the textured wall. And so we use something that you can buy at Home Depot. Uh, it's called Yucca Board. It's made of eucalyptus. Um, it's a board that is one eighth inch thick and it's sold in sheets that are four feet by eight feet long. So you can cover a lot of area with one of these sheets. And the nice thing too is because we decided only like halfway up the wall, as you can kind of see behind me, um, the four foot sheets ended up working really well for our uh, design. And um, basically, you just had to cut the lengths of them uh, to, to, to fit the wall. And then in, in around details, things like outlets and light switches. Um, these are also nice because, you know, one side is perfectly smooth and paintable. The other side actually is, is somewhat textured. If you look at it, um, you can kind of see the texture, I think, here in the, in the camera shot. Um, because when you put these up, you actually... Uh, you know, you use nails, but behind, um, behind the board, you're actually putting it up with a construction adhesive. The nails basically just hold it in place while the construction and adhesive dries. So um, that texture <coughs> uh, helps, helps hold the boards to the wall. Um, the second part of the system after the panels um, is the, the battens. These are the parts that go up and down on the wall. And this is a, uh, a batten that we used. It's uh, made by a brand called Trimfinity. Um, and they're polystyrene moldings, basically. And they have a unique kind of shape to them. The back of them have a, has a divot out of the back. Um, and, uh, but we, we, we like these because they're perfectly straight, uh, very smooth, um, you know, finish. Um, the edges, you know, the, are, are sort of rounded here on the corners. Uh, looks very nice on the wall. Um, there are some other products um, that were available at Home Depot that could have done the job too that are just pine. Um, but I think the imperfections would have made it a little more challenging. And so we ended up choosing these. And then the last um, part of the system was just um, these boards that are at the top rail. They're MDF boards. They sell them uh, at Home Depot. They're four and a half inches wide and what was that about three quarters of an inch uh, deep. And they're made out of a, a basically like a particle board type of uh, material. They are pre-primed, that makes it really easy to work with. And then obviously we had to do some uh, priming and painting and then caulking in the corners and the detail. So that's the, the, the materials we used and let's start and take a look at how the project went. All right, so we have our first panel up. We've marked the walls where the studs are and to mount it to the wall, we used uh, construction adhesive and 18 gauge brad nails. To do this again, what we do is put about a two worth on every four by four uh, square panel of uh, the construction adhesive and then put it up on the wall and use, like I say, 18 gauge brad nails uh, to affix it to the studs on the top and the bottom. That helps hold the adhesive in place uh, while the adhesive dries. To put the adhesive on first, what you do is you will uh, actually squirt it onto the back of the board and then you want to spread it like uh, butter using a, we, we, we're using a paint stick. You could use an old scrap of wood or whatever, uh, but you want to have it so that it is evenly spread on the back of the panel. Uh, if it was just left this way, you would get kind of bulges and warps in it. By spreading it out, you get it nice and smooth and it will stick to the wall uniformly and you won't have parts that, of the panel that uh, kind of pop out and pop back in when you touch them. One of the things you want to do uh, when you do put this up with the adhesive is to make sure you you know press the whole board against the wall. Do it before you put the nails on and then also again afterwards. You can even use a mallet just to, just to um, help make it adhere to the wall. But you want to make sure it's nice and smooth. There's no bubbles, there's no flex uh, or anything. That, that adhesive should be holding that board tightly against the wall. I can feel right now that there is nothing. There's no give, there's no warp, there's no flex. This is solid against the wall just the way we want it. And the other thing I will just say is that, you know, again, where you are putting nails, we're putting them around the perimeter. I'm not doing them anywhere in the center, except along this seam where I know that there's gonna be a board here. I could also measure and do some along here if I wanted to, but 
Um, right for now, all I need to do is to do that perimeter, which is going to be covered up by a vertical board. And then up at the top here, you know, we're going to have some trim covering it up for the most part. And the bottom edge, I'm, I'm not going to worry about too much. I am going to put some down there because I want it to be nice and tight against the wall and uh, the mar to the surface is not bad. So um, everything's looking good right now. Um, this is our first wall. We have some other walls to do. Um, it's gonna be a little more tricky. This is a nice big one where it is uh, flat without a lot of features other than one electrical outlet. The rest of the walls will be a little more challenging. Now we're gonna put the brad nails where the studs are, uh, just under the edge so that uh, when we put the trim on top, they won't show as much. And one of the things we're doing as we are nailing in these panels, um, this is a new panel um, than the one I just showed you, is you know we, we put the nails in on the edge where the studs are. Along the edge, however, this is going to be where one of the vertical uh, boards is, and there isn't a stud there. Um, but we want it to be secure, and so what we do is when we're putting the nail in, um, you can go straight in, but that's just holding on to drywall and that's not going to be very secure and so when I'm firing these nails I'm using the gun at a slight angle maybe 20 degrees or so just so it kind of uh, goes in a little bit at an angle so if the board were to pull out it would have to be pulling out at, a, at an angle that just helps make it a little more secure you could do it in the other direction uh, but I'm just doing it that way um, just to make sure that the nail goes in and has a little more to grip on uh, with the drywall. So hopefully that'll help people. One of the key things when we're doing this project is to remember these electrical boxes. And I think it's just, it, it bears a moment just to uh, talk about it because when you look at the, the cutouts here, and I do have the power cut off here from the circuit breaker. Obviously you don't want to be playing around with outlets unless you have your circuit breaker turned off. But, um, this needs to uh, go against the exterior of the panel, and so that panel needs to be pretty tightly uh, measured so that it mounts flush with the electrical box behind it. Uh, need to measure from the corner, and then, uh, you know, basically from the corner where you start the panel, um, you probably start, you know, put the, the panel flush up against the corner, and then you measure it up from the baseboard uh, to get to the to the electrical box here um, so that everything is measured and it will mount um, the exterior of the plug against the exterior of of the uh, panel one tip i'd say when you are spreading your adhesive is um, you don't want to spread it too thin um, you do want to spread it but the back of this hardboard panel is grooved and if you spread it too much they'll it'll almost disappear in those little uh, textured uh, holes on the back of the panel so I am spreading it but I'm not going so far that it is completely um, buried in the back of the board so I think it's good to go around make sure you get the perimeter of your boards and then make sure the center is also covered so you're holding it down tightly with enough uh, material but don't put uh, it all over the place and then spread it so thin that it, there's nothing there to hold on. So just a, just an idea for you. Okay, here we are about two thirds of the way through the project. We have the panels up and we have the top trim up in most areas except around the windows. Uh, this took us a little bit of while, especially around those windows. There's a lot of work to do there, but uh, looking pretty good. This detail around the window, I just wanted to show it to you so you could see kind of what we had to do. Uh, there were some detailed cuts, and there are also going to be some seams there on the panels, which we wanted to minimize as much as possible. And so in these areas, what we did is sanded those down a little bit, and then also used some joint compound, and then sanded the joint compound to help smooth those over. Next, I want to show you a little detail as we were placing the battens. We would put a batten up and then tape it to the trim above it. In this case, this is a short one uh, right under one of the windows. And you can see we've, we've actually uh, taped all these up as well, just to make sure that everything was visually pleasing and spaced appropriately. 
Now here I am um, putting some of the adhesive, construction adhesive on the back of one of these battens. One of the interesting things about the battens is that they have kind of a carve out in the back and the edges are the only place that have contact on the back. And so to make it stick to the wall right, you have to put the adhesive right on the edge there. And you also wanna be driving the nails when you are putting them on the panels um, through those edges as much as possible. And so you have to kind of be careful, uh, put them right along the edge. And then what I also do here is I put a few big blobs just in the center because I want the center to also be uh, connected to the panel and to have uh, contact with the panel. So once we have that set up, you can see this is kind of what it looks like. And there will also be nails uh, helping to secure that. Now I've marked where the batten goes and I'll flip it up into place as you can see here and then push it against the wall a little bit to make sure that um, you know it, it's uh, positioned correctly. And then also use a square to make sure that it's um, at a right angle to the baseboard. Once that's in place, uh, just take my, uh, my brad nailer to position it here. One of the things about these brad nails is that they are only really there just to hold the battens in place while the glue dries. Once the glue dries, that's what's actually going to be responsible for holding the battens and the panels in place. Now here I am taking an, uh, a scrap piece of batten that I've cut to a specific length. Uh, we wanted these um, window uh, battens to be centered and then 20 and a half inches apart under each window. And so I used a spacer and that's a handy trick to be using. Here's what we used for sanding. Um, we wanted to rough these up um, so that the, the paint and the, actually the primer would stick uh, effectively to each of the pieces, both the panels and to the battens. And then we also had used joint compound over each of the nail, uh, each of the nails that were on the panels and wanted them to be smoothed out as well. So uh, filled them with uh, the joint compound and then sanded over it. Lastly, uh, in the process was just to use a caulk gun to put some caulking into all the corners of every batten and under the trim. And once we were done with that, it was time to start painting. First, we use Kills Primer to prime uh, the panels and the battens. And then we painted it uh, using just pure white. As you can see here, we're just kind of finishing up and touching up. And it's looking pretty good. We were pretty happy with uh, how everything was turning out at this point. In the end, um, this took us a little more time than we expected. Um, actually, in this photo, we're, we have a little more work to do. We, we had some things that we wanted to uh, actually touch up on the blue paint as well. But basically, it's done here. Um, and gosh, it turned out really nice. I think it uh, really improved the room. It brightened it up. And actually, I believe it would add value to our home as well. There you can see some spots where the blue needed to be touched up. Hey, if this video helped you, um, best way to thank me is to either buy me a beer or to hit that subscribe button. I hope this helps you. And if you do this project, uh, give us a comment in the, in the comments below. Let us know how it went. Thanks so much, everybody.